Okay, um, if everybody has downloaded the image of the character Mike from Reboot, what I want to do now is show you how you can use that image as a template inside Lightroom. So you can have basic proportions. For some models, you really need a front view, a top view, white view, you know, all scale about the same size so that you can use them for alignment and proportions. It really depends on how comfortable you feel. This is a pretty straightforward model. So having just the front view, not a perfect frontal view, but it's actually more of a three-quarter view, but still will work and will help us. Sometimes it gets in the way, other times, you know, it works for the most part okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure I have all my tools so I don't have to paint anymore. And I think I have them all. I'm going to go ahead and hit D for display. Make sure that's selected. There you go. D for display. And now what I want to do in my viewports, uh, I'm going to go to um, backdrop. So layout, viewports, backdrop. What I want is the bottom left, so that could either be my front or back view. Notice it has image. What I'm going to do, um, let me check something real quick here. the whole backdrop and that's not what I want. Um, in fact, I'm almost sure of it. But let me do it anyway just to prove that I'm wrong here for the moment. Let's go back to the other image. Um, and I may have to, there it is, and you know what? It looks like it will open, but you never know. And that will bring up another issue if it doesn't. It did. It just fine. It did what I wanted it to do. It's a GIF. It opened the GIF. And it's in the background. And it's kind of small. And that's OK. Because if I, hit, if, I, if I go ahead and I zoom in here, we can make this item pretty small. It doesn't have to be very big. If we want to make it bigger, um, the item bigger, then go ahead and hit display again. Go back to backdrop. And bottom left, um, you'll notice that we can go ahead and we can change the size of it. Right now, it's set to one meter, um, one meter scale. Can't hear. Um, then we have another issue. Did that happen for anyone else? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll jump right okay, it's not bringing it in. Okay, then let me go ahead and take the mic and I'm going to remove it. <coughs> okay, so that's what I was concerned about because I was able to open the GIF. That seemed pretty nice, but you know what? Um, sometimes LightWave gets real picky with images and it wants a TGA file, which stands for part of it. So what we have to do is open Photoshop. So let's open Photoshop. Um, do I have Photoshop down here? No, I don't. I thought I put it down here. Okay. So open up Photoshop. <coughs> and open the file in Photoshop. Then we're going to save it. We're, just, we're not going to do anything to it. We're just going to do a save. It. Um, because it's a GIF, it might be index color, so we might have to switch to RGB. If it is open as a GIF inside Photoshop, it is index color, so I have to go to image mode, change it to RGB. 
And now I'm going to do a file save as. Save it in your flash drive where you saved it before. We're just going to save this now, not as a Photoshop file, but down here uh, as a target. And you'll notice that the extension with target is TGA. Under format, it says it gives us all these options to save it as a target file so that you have the extension TGA. And click save. Um, 24 bit is just fine. Go okay, ahead and close this. I'm going to close Photoshop. Let's go back to Lightweight. Click D for display. Click on backdrop. Make sure that you have bottom left selected under image. Load image. I don't want to load the mic yet, but I already tried. I want mic TGA. Open that. And then click OK. And that didn't do it. It worked as the GIF. It didn't work as that. Let me try it again. Did I, did I forget something? D, backdrop, image, load image. My TGA is open. It doesn't want that either. Wow. Um, and I didn't want top left anyway. I wanted the bottom. So I'm going to try one more time. Image. Hello, image. You see, we have a problem. I don't know why that is. My mine accepts the GIF now, but it doesn't accept the PGA, and usually it's just the opposite. So, um, one more time, and then one more time. Bottom left. Have had success with the GIF or the TGA or which? Or both? Yeah, the JPEG. Huh? It was JPEG. For the JPEG. Okay. If the, if the TGA doesn't work, then try JPEG. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to resize it a little bit. One to 30 meters by one to 30 meters, and that should be just fine. I'm just going to leave it that size and I'm going to zoom in and we're going to work on it a little bit larger. Okay, we'll be set. Let me go back to display again because if I didn't save this before, um, under view ports, top right, I already have independent zoom with independent rotation. Um, well, I spent what? 15 minutes on something we should have taken in about two minutes. Um, I'm obviously not going to get a whole lot on my video today. Um, oh well. 
Okay, let's start, and this would be true in character modeling, you typically start with building the head. And oftentimes you build the body separate and then you connect the two. In this case, because this guy has built the parts of the metal parts anyway, it's, they're all separate parts that we can just stick together. But for general proportions, still have loading. Okay, then just keep it in the background and just use it for reference. And then when I'm done lecturing, we'll try to figure out what, what it is. Okay, so I'm going to start with the box still. And I'm going to click and drag. So I have you know, basic proportions here. And I'm going to go back so that looks about right. Could be a little bit more. That looks about right. And don't click it off yet. Okay. Make sure that you have your numeric requester up. And zoom in here in your perspective. Because we're going to add some functionality to this. And this is another reason for the numeric requester. Notice down here that we have, we can add a radius to this because if we look at Reboot, you'll see that the edges here are rounded. They're significantly rounded, aren't they? Um, this could be added later, but I would just assume do it now. So to do that, I'm going to add the radius. And I'm going to go ahead and how much? I don't know. That's a nice big rounded radius, but notice it's pretty chiseled, isn't it? So I made it 23. Okay. 24 millimeters. To add radiuses to this, or set radius segments, it will smooth it out. So I'm going to go ahead and start defining this. And eight looks pretty good. And now notice I have nice rounded corners here. Everybody following along? Everybody get that? Um, how, do you, how do you save the image from, from, uh, from the internet to your desktop? Um, right click on it. <clears throat> and yeah, save image as, right? And save image, image as, and just save it on. I put it on my desktop, you want to save it on your flash drive, so you have it. It's not saving it as like a JPEG or anything like that. No, it will, be a GIF. it will be a GIF, because that's what it was. To, do, to save it as another file format, you have to open it in Photoshop, and then do a file save as, and change it. Well, I'm saying from, from the page on the internet, I right click on it, and it, and it only allows you to get the dot h on it. Okay. Okay, you got that. And then right click on it. Save it again. Um, no. Okay. Go ahead and save it. I think I did that. It's on the desktop already. And that's all I'm doing. Okay, so this is pretty close to what I want. Now there's more things that I'm going to do with this because I need to build in the screen and the indent. Okay? And this gets a little bit tricky now. But is it, it's important that everybody's with me so far to get the radius and add the segments so you get the nice rounded corners. Everybody got that? We got something done today? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this off. And what I'm going to do is that I need, I'm thinking aloud here because looking at the reboot character, um, I probably actually want the, the glass screen to be on top of it. 
meaning I, I need it need it rounded and curved. And sit there. Well, I'm going to make a copy of this. So I'm going to select polygons, and I'm going to select this front polygon. And I'm going to copy it. Command or just Command C, Apple C. And then I'm going to select another layer, and I'm going to hit Command V for paste. Okay. So I have a copy of that there for later. And we'll watch what I do now. <clears throat> so that's that's on another layer. It's there for later use because I'm going to use that is the, the glass. I forget what it's called. Glass. <laughs> it's on there. The screen. Okay. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I need to inset this a little bit. So I'm going to, again, select this. And I need to add geometry to this, because if I hit T for move now, watch what happens. If I just move it, notice that I can, it stretches it and does some kind of wonky stuff here. That's not exactly what I want. I need to add geometry to this. So this is, we're going to, this is a brand new tool now. And this is part of organic modeling in a way that doesn't have to be, and it's just a better way to work. When you have a single polygon selected, the best tool to use to add geometry is the bevel tool. And that's found under multiply. V for bevel. V is your friend. So with that polygon selected, if I hit V for bevel, V, and then I just, anywhere on any one of these quadrants, just click. It looks like nothing has happened, doesn't it? But in fact, if I go ahead now and I resize this, watch what happens. If I go ahead and I go to mode, and I say I want the center of my selection, and I go to modify, and I resize, and I resize that, look what happens. Notice how it's added geometry now. See how these little lines along here? If you had done that before, they wouldn't have been there. And now watch what happens by resizing it. And now I hit T for move, and I move it back. See the little black area here that's inset? Let me look. This for a minute. Um, I want to open this for a minute. Okay, see the little black area here? That's what I'm creating right now. I want this to be inset. So that all of this <coughs> is built upon the existing geometry. And as you go, you're adding geometry and you're bending and you're conforming to make it work for you. Does that sort of make sense now, a little bit? You see the black area that I'm talking about? I created my rounded corner. Now I added geometry to build this. It's not going to look exactly like this, but darn close. Now I can hit T for move. If I move that in a little bit, put some resize it a little bit more. That's pretty good. Now I hit T for move. And I move it back like so. Now notice how it's inset. I need to do two things. I needed to add geometry by hitting D for bevel. It took that single polygon and it added geometry all the way around. Now by taking that single polygon and moving it, look at the extra four polygons it created when I hit B for bevel. If I didn't do that, it just moved that single polygon backwards. Now what I want to do is I want to make this concave. See how this is concave? The green back here? There is a couple of ways we can do this. Um, I can go ahead and I can add geometry to this, just as I did before, but a little bit differently. I'm not going to get to be for bevel. What I want to do, because this is a single plane, I want to add more, have it broken down into more polygons like a mesh. 
so that I can bend that mesh in, in any number of ways. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, this and I'm going to subdivide it. So to do that, I'm going to go to multiply and where it says subdivide down here, just select subdivide. Boom. Faceted is just fine or smooth would be just fine. Faceted is okay. And notice it breaks it down into four polygons. It takes it and it cuts it. And if I hit that again, subdivide again, it's going to do the same again. If I hit subdivide again, it's going to break it down again. It just keeps doubling it and doubling it and doubling it. That's under the multiply tool. Okay. Subdivide. A really fine mesh now, isn't it? Now I can actually curve this and bend it because it's like a screen, a mesh. It's multiple joints that I can actually curve. I can select individual polygons, or I can go back instead, and I'm going to use the modify tool, one of the modify tools, and instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called um, the magnet tool. And you'll notice in the magnet tool that by default, it should be radial, but we're going to use a variety of fall-offs now, which are like weight maps. They control how much of this curves. I want to use radial. I'm also going to curve this like so, the top one, so it's a nice, smooth, parabolic curve. You everybody see this little bar right here? I want it nice and curved. So. Now what I want to do is to determine where that fall off is, I need to bring out a widget that shows me where the fall off is. And this is where you need to use either the command key or if you have the three button press, you right click. So I'm going to right click on here and notice this pulls out a little circle. Like so. Now I right click again and this actually becomes a sphere or close to being a sphere. One from the top view, one from the front view. Notice that you look at it from all these views and it looks sort of round, doesn't it? It's, you see a box from the perspective view. Now I can left click inside here and I pull it back, watch what happens. See how it sort of curves and arcs? Now, that's not what I want, because it's bending this as well. So I'm going to undo, and something is going on here that I don't like. So, um, I'm just going to see none. And I'm going to try this again, I'm going to pull it back, and that doesn't help me. Oh boy, today's not going so hot. Hold on here. Oh, let me try this again. I'm pull out the bricks. I didn't want to do that. I don't want to move. Um, okay. Let me try the magnet tool again. I'm going to right click. I made the, the box a little bit too big. <coughs> so I need to zoom in here so I can see this a little better. Okay, once again, let me undo this. 
I do want the magnet for it. I was right. I'm going to zoom in from my back view a little bit so that I can make this fall off widget a little bit more precise. I want this to be the center here so that the fall off is pretty equal. Does everybody get the hang of that? To right click to get the little widget. Right click, I can make it smaller. Right click, I can make it bigger. Right click, I can work from other views. And then when I left click, watch what happens when I pull it back. See how it begins to bend a little bit? So, that's what I want. I was able to get that nice and curved. So in order to get it curved, you have to do a few things. Now watch, I'm going to go ahead and I'm happy with this, so I'm done. I'm going to go over here for a minute. What if I try to curve this? This is like a one big sheet of glass, isn't it? So you can't curve it. It's just, it's, it's, if I try to use the magnet tool, and do the same thing here. If I, if I centered this and I right click and pulled out the little widget, I right click and I pulled out the widget, and right click and I move it in place, and I try to bend this now. And I try to left click and bend it. It's not going to move, is it? It can't. It can only break. There are no joints. And by having added the extra geometry, it, 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 it became like a mesh or a screen so that I could easily, it could become more pliable or flexible. So the more geometry you add, the more it enables you to bend and to, and to flex it and to use some of these modification tools. Now watch, if I, if I deselect this, since I can't do anything, I'm going to go back to multiply and I'm going to subdivide this. Now watch if I try the, what happens when I try the, um, <coughs> still not too much. Let me go ahead and right click again, pull it out. back a little bit now. I have those joints that allows me that allows it to bend more. Even with just that, it allows a little bit of a bend by adding it by adding adding the geometry. Does that make sense to everybody? Are you getting that to work or not? I need to know. It's not working? I'm if we're gonna work together um I need to make sure everybody's able to follow along. It's not working? I need to, you guys have to speak up. Yes, no, it's not. Okay, let me, that's all I need to know. Let me turn off the video and then let's see where you're at. <coughs> okay, go ahead and make your box. And bring up the numeric requester. You need that up. I don't have that. Hit N for numeric requester. Yeah, but I don't. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to delete everything and I'm going to start over again. And it might be helpful. You have to decide for yourself whatever your learning style is, whether it's just easier to sit back and to watch or to try to follow along. And if I follow along, you need to speak up if I'm going too quickly. 
the building for you again? Where did you click? Where did you go? Because I'm looking out here and I said, is everybody okay? And I don't hear him. And I said, is everybody okay? And I don't hear him. And I know that things are messed up. So let me go ahead and... Um, Let's go ahead and let's do that. Okay, one of the problems we discovered early on is that um, someone imported the image and couldn't see it because they probably had zoomed so far out, like so you can't see the image. And if it shows that it's imported under D, and you look under the backdrop and you see bottom left that it's here, but there's something wrong. So, hit A, remember that resizes it to fit. A resizes all your windows to fit. Another thing that's useful too is to make sure under perspective view that we're looking at this under texture wire because I want to see the texture, but I also want to see the underlying geometry. I want to see all the polygons. Sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. In this, in this particular instance, I want to see them all. I want to see them all. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in so I can see my character. And I want to make sure that I have all my tools. Remember, you have to remember to check every time you come in to make sure that you have all your tools. And if, if you have the Create tab and it comes up short, like about halfway, remember to go to um, Utilities and Edit Plugins and make sure that they're all added. You're going to have to, unfortunately, do to check that every day. Okay. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select the box tool. And normally, you would have to probably reset this. So it's just one by one by one. Um, I prefer to build from the back view or the front. I start by clicking and dragging like so, and getting the approximate proportions here. And maybe moving it in place. Now I need to work from the top view, and I want to build the depth. that make sense? So the views that I use are also important. So that looks about the right proportions of the reboot character. Could be a little less, a little more. It's not important. I mean, it, it is a, proportions are important, don't get me wrong. But I don't have to know an exact measurement. I'm basing it on what I see here. But this looks about right. But before I'm done, what I want to do is I want to add a radius because I noticed that reboot here is really curved. That's why you always need your numeric requester. You can't do it any other way. It just adds functionality to this tool. Now I can come up here and I can use the center <coughs> to add a radius. But it doesn't look very round, it does it. It looks pretty chiseled. That's because I need to add geometry. I need to add the radius segments. How many do you add? Bottom line is I try to use as few as I need. And if you add just a couple, it gets a little bit rounded, a few more, a few more. And I'm thinking, you know what, eight ought to do it. And it looks pretty rounded when I'm done. So now I've done a lot. I've made, a, I've made the basic proportions of his head. <clears throat> I've added the radial corners without doing it, you know, with, that, with using just the, the basic tool here, the basic box tool. Now I can go ahead and I can set it so it's in place. Now I'm ready to work with the dimensions inside the reboot character here, or the dimensions. Work within the screen here. I'm going to take my existing box and I'm going to add and modify the geometry of this to get this inside screen. Now, conceivably, I could come back here, I could delete this, and I could try to hand make a little thing in there and make it fit just right, and that would work. But it would take a lot longer, and it's less efficient, and it, in the end, ultimately, it could cause you problems. But it is doable. And I can come back here. I can select polygons. 
So I have polygon selected. Select this polygon and just delete it. And then come back and build my shape and try to attach it or put it in place. You know, it just, it's ugly. I'm trying to show you a more elegant way to work. <coughs> so this is the polygon I need to edit. This is the one I want to change. But if I try to move it, resize it from here, like what happens if I select the resize tool or the size tool here, and I select mode, I want the center of selection, and I resize it from here, look what it does. It's pulling some of those corners out, doesn't it? Isn't it? That's not what I want. So in order to be able to edit or add that geometry I want, I need to add geometry. And there are tools to do that. The bevel tool is your friend. It will help you, especially with a single polygon, to add the geometry. We are going to use, be using the bevel tool a lot, a lot, a lot this semester. So with the single polygon selected, and you do that by selecting polygons. If you have points selected, I can't select it. You have to have polygons selected, and then I can select it. So now I go ahead and I hit B for bevel. And I just click any, any quadrant. I can click anywhere, just one left click, and I've added geometry. You don't notice it, but you have. And don't keep clicking, 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 or you're going to add way more geometry than what you need. Now watch what happens when I go to modify and I size. Because I'm sizing from the center of the selection, notice that I don't get that weird shape here where it pulled from it at, before. It actually has added geometry so that I have additional four <coughs> polygons, one on each side. That's what the bevel tool did. It, uh, it added that geometry so that when I resize this, Now I get T for move, and it's important to know which view you use to move it. You don't move it from the perspective view, you don't move it from the back or the front view, but you can move it from the top or the right view. So I get T for move, and now I can click and I can drag, and it moves it back. And now notice the geom by adding this geometry, notice that now I can make this inset. Now my next goal, and I already kind of screwed up, but can anybody tell me what I did wrong? Go ahead. Huh? Okay. <coughs> you have T for move selected, T for move. Now click and drag. We have a radio call selected. Um, <coughs> For the move, I don't want any fall off selected. That was why that problem was caused there. Now, I wasn't thinking ahead. Um, I could still do it, conceivably do it, but remember I wanted to, to build a crystal or the the glass on top, and I copied that and I pasted it on another level. So I had one that was the same size, same place, that I didn't have to move it before. So from, from my point of view, it's easier to go back and to undo and to copy that and paste it just so I have it. So I'm just going to hit Command Z. So I'll take that one polygon, I'm going to copy it. Select another layer, paste it. No, nope. I didn't have to go back. I didn't copy it yet, so I'm going to select the polygon. That won't move. There we go. Copy. Hey, oh, it's hitting the wrong keys here. Copy. Paste. Now, why is it important that I do it here? It's the right size, the right position. 
I don't have to worry, you know, is it going to fit? Is it going to be in the right place? That's why I thought it would be easier just to undo and go back. Now I can reselect this. I'm going to go ahead and hit B for bevel, bevel is the primary. Click, I've added geometry, I'm going to modify size, pull it in. And I'm in the perspective view when I do this. And why does it work in the perspective view? Why is it resizing evenly? Because I have down here under mode that it's the center of selection. It's resizing from the center of selection. If it were any of the others, it wouldn't. It would skew to one side or another. Now I can hit T for move. <clears throat> and again, I want to make sure that it moves directly back. So I'm not using the top view. Like so. So now I have that built-in bevel there. <clears throat> There's something else that I haven't been doing all along that I probably should too. What do you think that might be? <clears throat> I need to think ahead and think about um, surfaces. And every time I come across or I add polygons that are going to be different surfaces, I probably should assign a placeholder for them. So, I can do it now, but to think, think about it, all the polygons in here for the radial corners is just overwhelming. So I'm going to undo again. I'm going to deselect. And what key do I get to assign a color to this? Q. I don't want it to fall, so I can select it. <clears throat> and this is going to be gold or brass or something, so I'll name it brass. Because that's what I really like the color that we have in here is brass or gold close enough. And just to make a color that's close, we'll make it sort of a gold color. backed up a couple of steps because I, as I'm working here, I'm thinking, I goof. Let me, go, let me back up before I make too many changes and then move ahead. Sometimes it's quicker to take a step back or two and then proceed ahead. <clears throat> Select the polygon. And now I'm going to go ahead and um, hit B for bevel. And click. And I'm going to go ahead and resize. So, and I should probably stop for a moment again. I mean, I guess I could go ahead and move it back. <coughs> move, let's move it back. <coughs> and turn off move and deselect the polygon. Now what I want to do is I want to select these four polygons. Because they're going to be a different color, aren't they? They're going to be the black. So now I go ahead and I hit Q, and I'll name it black. So this is my black texture. And I my color picker, and I come down here, and then that looks just fine, and boom, that makes it black. Now if I want, I can go ahead and I can deselect these. I can also click on this polygon, and this is going to be a light blue, isn't it? It's back here. So I can hit Q for it. Let's put the color picker. Whoops. And we'll call it blue. I click on the color picker. I can bring it up. Like so I'm going to kind of a lightish green here. Yes, I um, when I, when I tried to make part of it black, like the whole thing turned black. When you made? When I made the, the little outline, I was trying to make it black, everything turned black. So. 
I'm not understanding. <coughs> You have to reassign, you have to yeah, name it something, something different. Mm -hmm. Just select those four polygons. Okay, then I can't do it. Because you said make the fault. So you have to deselect that. Do they have No, should show up a lot. Now it will select the whole thing, but it, you're going to change these too when you do that. It's important to think of the order. So this is close to what he looks like, but we're making some changes here. It's actually a little bit softer, a little bit more organic. No, you can go ahead and hit Q and make it all. Don't so turn off the fault. Name it gold, name it brass, name it whatever you want. Okay, now select these separate polygons and then name it black and then you have to hold down the shift key and select the additional ones and make sure that you only select those four so you want to hold up the three of them. These you don't want. So now it's time to try to, <coughs> to bend this a little, and I'll try to bend it a little differently. In order to bend it, you need added geometry. It's like it needed to add these facets in order to round it. So to do that, I'm going to multiply with this one polygon selected, I'm going to select subdivide. And when you select subdivide, it takes it and it cuts it into four parts. <coughs> now it's going to take those four parts and cut it, them into four parts. It builds geometrically. So keep getting facet until, or rather subdivide, until what looks to me like a nice tight mesh. And you can keep doing this, but this might be adequate. I don't know. I think it's okay. The only way you can know for sure is that when you bend it, you look and you see, okay, well, that looks about right. Um, I can take, if I wanted, and just select a handful of polygons, like so. And I can move these back as well. This would be another approach. See now if I can't keep remove and I move it back. See what it does. But I probably, because it's looking kind of wonky, I would probably want to add, use the bevel tool again to, to add geometry to do that. But I think 
it doesn't look exactly like what they have done. Um, that's okay. So I'm just going to make it more curvy. So how I select these is, I mean, I can go ahead and part of the problem is that I do need to select them all now. Um, <laughs> I guess I could undo and go back, or now you have the job of selecting all these, and this is where it can be a very tedious. Making sure that you select the polygons you want and not the others. Um, and you will discover very quickly if you're missing one or two, and this is really kind of a crummy way to do this. That's why it, it helps to sort of plan ahead. And see how I'm missing some? this ready to go. Um, I've already assigned all of my surfaces. If I want, I can I can at this time I could put the 
the screen back on top and fix it if I wanted to. Um, would be hurt, I suppose. Done here. I mean, it doesn't look like we've accomplished much, but actually we have. Because what we did is we started with a simple box. And before we were done with the box, we made nice rounded corners. And then using some basic bevel techniques, we added geometry so that we could build part of this frame here. And then in addition to that, we used another modification tool as well as subdividing to add geometry to this so that we could make it nice and rounded. So before you know it, you have something fairly complex that started off with just makes it making, like just starting off and just making a very, very simple basic plot. So starting with basic geometry and then using the right tools to build geometry and add geometry and modify the geometry as you go. So I'm done with the magnet tool. And I can deselect this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how do you add geometry again? Did you show this? The bevel. B for bevel. <coughs> That's what, and then for this was subdivide. Mm -hmm. And it takes the existing number of polygons and it keeps having them, having them, having them, making them, or doubling them, I should say. But like how you smoothed the TV, how you smoothed out the box, how did you do that with the bevel? How did I smooth? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, you know how it's all smooth? Because mine is like more sharp. And did you change the widget over here under the numeric requester? No. Where I change it to a parabolic, oh, nice right. even curve, and you have to try chest that. Right. <coughs> I'm running out of video tape, so that's not really not bad, but I'll continue and we'll continue to build and I'll come back and review that again as well. You guys want to take a break? We'll come back. Let's take about a 15 minute break. Thank <laughs> you.